Today, I saw a post on video cards that instantly grabbed my attention. NVIDIA, as expected by me, is reducing 3060 supply following the flood that I outlined they would have in August. Now, again, just to recap, that flood in August was NVIDIA diverting GA106 and some 104 dies from supplying laptop because they'd rather put less RAM, just 6 gigabytes, on a laptop card and outship AMD. Well, AMD is more efficient for laptops than they've ever been. Then bother trying to supply the low end of the desktop market until AMD has competition. The 60 6600 XT was competition, and NVIDIA knew that even if there were record shipments of it, and there were, that it wouldn't be enough. That most gamers would still not be able to get a hold of it, as I outlined in that video. They wouldn't, because demand is just far too high despite record shipments. And they knew most people, if they failed to get a $400 6600 XT, they just say, screw it, I'm getting a $500 3060. And they were temporarily in stock. They were. 3060s were in stock, but they were already sold out as expected, and now they're reducing supply as covered on video cards in IT Home. And this was provably expected by me. Honestly, I think I've been saying this in pretty much every podcast and a loose ends since that report came out, but here's an example clip of me talking about it. Should flood the market. Within a week of this podcast coming out, it's actually already, I have some distributors saying they've already received more 3060s than they've received in the previous three months combined already in August, which is technically a little misleading because they've been receiving almost no 3060s for three months, <laughs> if not, if literally none at some locations, by the way, I'm told. Literally none, guys. Um, and it's because NVIDIA doesn't want to supply a card that makes absolutely no sense with GDR6 costs right now. But that this is nvidia is going to flood the market with overpriced 3060s that and then they'll probably stop making a lot of them because they just want to keep putting those in laptops and sending 3070s that have huge margins on them which i bring all of this up because well i was looking around at some comments i'm not going to show them on screen today for a few reasons but i was looking at some comments from people that just made me realize just how much nuance is lost in the coverage of this market and how many people just want to grab onto a piece of a headline and then attack someone, disregard someone, or champion someone they're fanboying for instead of actually listening to the context. And I feel that's going to happen in this reporting that's coming out now about 3060 Supply again. Now, let's be clear about what's been said in this report. Video Cards technically says he can only confirm a COVID outbreak affecting production. Of all Ampere cards, and I reached out to him for confirmation. This was not specific to the 3060, at least of now. Uh, that's what he can confirm. Additionally, IT Home is specifically talking about RT RTX 3060 production being reduced, and they even outlined that they were wrong about 3060 supply being reduced in August. It was not reduced. They were in stock. You could buy them, but it wasn't enough to satisfy demand, as outlined. And... Um, yeah, I guess it was more backloaded in August than expected, but I mean, it really did come out about a week after I said it was going to mostly drop in that podcast. And I think if all you do is go, I couldn't get one, so it didn't happen, and then go, oh, it's being reduced, that was wrong. There's just so much nuance being missed here. And there's greater stories and analysis that can be done than just grabbing onto little pieces of headlines and misunderstanding the greater picture. There will always be COVID outbreaks happening for another year from now, and there have been the whole year. And I said two weeks ago the supply will be restricted in September. So that's quite an odd leap to make that a new COVID outbreak is causing some 3060 restriction if I've already been saying it was going to happen before we heard about this. I just don't think they are connected. And there's even more going on behind the scenes that I think people are missing. You know, the story gets more interesting when you consider that right now, LHR cards are being cracked. Not only did I cover, by the way, in that 3060 flood that they were still making full hash rate cards, but now it seems that, well, as expected, mining firms cracked LHR cards and some of that cracking that probably honestly happened from the beginning at these giant firms is trickling into consumer applications. Right now on NB Miner, you can mine at 70% efficiency with an LHR card, not just half hash rate. And I am told 
from a couple contacts that this is really just the beginning, that they're already about to release an 85% effective crack for LHR. And in fact, they're working on a version that will try to get as close to 100% as possible. LHR cards really aren't going to be LHR cards soon. And this is just when we're being told that gamer versions aren't being made as much. I don't know. I'm not saying there's a connection between that either, but it's worth pointing out. And it's funny that I am told from some sources recently that these things are being improved on over time because a couple of weeks ago, actually, a distributor told me that some firms in China had coaxed LHR card into mining at near full efficiency already. See, I think the word coaxed is interesting because that tells you they just tricked it into mining at a higher rate than NVIDIA supposedly wants them to, although I don't really think they care. And that if it's a trick, that means it's something that won't work perfectly out of the gate, but will be improved on. And that's what we're seeing here. And so look what's going on here. A 3060 surge and then a redirection and then now LHR cards being cracked. And well, there's more going on behind the scenes. And I think there's a greater story I'll probably end up telling after talking to more people and thinking about it longer in the coming months. But before I do that, I just wanted to make this video to make it clear that you got to read between the lines on some of these articles, people, and you got to pay attention to the nuance. I mean, look what's going on, right? Let me just outline everything around the 3060 supply over the next month before I even believe we have the full story. Number one, I had been indicating that this was happening weeks ago. This isn't some new thing from a COVID outbreak. And technically what Video Guards is confirming is that there's a COVID outbreak that could affect all production, not just 3060s. These are arguably entirely unrelated data points. And the fact is LHR cards have been getting cracked for months and pretty soon even consumer applications will crack them. This is all happening while supplies being diverted again. And I've also been talking about how NVIDIA is diverting actually a lot of these 3060s now to system integrators trying to get on their good side before Intel Z Arc launches to directly challenge the low-end graphics market and maybe even the mid-range. I would lean towards this diversion being planned all along. I've had indications of it. There's much more going on behind the scenes. And if anything, I would point to the fact that mining getting big again relative to a month ago is probably connected to something else going on here in the supply chain as well. And again, what am I saying then? There's much more going on than just pointing at one thing and saying no, or pointing at that thing and saying it did or didn't happen. There's nuance, nuance that needs to be att paid attention to. And I just, I just want to make that clear because it's also connected to something else I want to make clear after talking to some people in some comment sections. And that's that if all you expect is for me to come out and say one thing's good or one thing's bad, or one thing is going to be a yes, no thing, that's really not what this channel is. Like, I've actually seen a few people get mad and say, why are you justifying the 6600 XT? Why do you justify all of these product releases this year? And I don't know that I would say I'm justifying anything. If you've looked at my 6800 XT review or really my 6700 XT review or any of my GPU reviews this year, including the 3080 Ti, I've said lukewarm at best things about all those products. And I've definitely trashed some of them, especially at their street prices. But if all you want out of a channel is for someone to jump up and say, me mad at this, high five, or yes, good, go buy it, that's never going to happen. I don't aim to justify these products. I aim to explain their place in the market, to bring nuance to why they're priced the way they are, where the market's going, bring in people to interview that try to make you understand what's actually going on behind the scenes. If all you want is for my channel, when a new graphics card comes out, to either cheerlead it like some kind of NVIDIA or AMD fanboy or say stuff like Intel's evil or AMD stupid, yeah, that's never going to happen. I'm not justifying these products. I'm just outlining why they exist and why they're priced the way they are priced. And if you don't want that nuance, well, there's plenty of channels putting out hate porn right now that would love your clicks, I'm sure. But that's just never what Moore's Law is Dead is going to be. 
And finally, before I close out this video, I want to drop a couple of leaks because why not? I'm going to talk about them in the new Broken Silicon. And so, well, I might as well put it at the end of a video for you guys before you get it in the podcast with the larger discussion. And the first one is about Intel Z. You see, Intel Z is definitely going to be at least around a 3060. Now, I want to be very clear. Again, nuance is important. What I mean by that. I am not saying Top Z won't be above a 3060. And that it's hard to say what the final performance will be yet because the drivers are in a horrible state. I mean worse than Vega a half a year before it came out state. And it's half a year before Z launches. So, what we can say though is this. Anyone doubting that Intel Z was at least going to compete with like a 3060, it, it will. It will at least compete with that now. Uh, will it get up to like a 3070 or 3070 Ti? Well, we'll just have to wait for more information to come in. But that's always been Intel's goal. And every piece of information I've leaked so far about Z has been correct. So I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. But you see, having final confirmation that a performance will be at a certain level is probably worrying NVIDIA. And that's why they're now probably going to start trying to be nicer to system integrators. That and also the news that AMD will be releasing a six nanometer version of Navi 22 and Navi 23. I know I'm not the first to say that, but I will say my sources independently can confirm that this is almost assuredly going to happen. And because it's just not even really a node shrink, uh, TSMC is six nanometers design compatible with their seven, but like kind of a half node shrink with little work required because that's what it is. AMD can kind of make sure this is out somewhat closer to the Z launch if they want to. They just can do this. And so, yeah, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, and a lot of it is targeted at now facilitating some supply to system integrators for low-end cards and, from AMD's perspective, directly to gamers on the do-it-yourself market. They're both preparing their combat for Z, and when you see little drops happen here or there, it's not a yes or no thing, and there's nuance. And so look for the details, pay attention, and... If you're not willing to hear the full conversations in Broken Silicon about what I mean, what I'm talking about, then don't get mad if you miss something because there's a lot more than I can just say in a five-minute soundbite about why things are going a certain way and why things may end up a certain way. And that's for the people who like details and enjoy nuance. The others... Just go to the hate porn channels. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was just a quick report I wanted to put out with a bunch of little leaks today. Trying to kind of get ahead of what I expect will be misunderstandings of some info coming out right now. If you enjoyed it, please, you know, share it, like it, ring the bell button on Moore's Law's Dead on YouTube, tell your friends about us, and... You know, subscribe to Broken Silicon for many more details, interviews with experts, and support us on Patreon if you want to be able to ask me and those experts questions, join the Discord, and get exclusive podcasts. Anyways, as always, though, thank you for watching.